trust within the client consultant relationship. To do so requires me to look at a key basis trust. That key basis is confidence based trust. Confidence based trust, uh, believe it or not, is very similar to some of the key attributes that we have within building information modelling. Some of those collaborative attributes that we have, and I'm going to explore some of those findings with you this afternoon. We conducted a survey then to test some of the knowledge, some of the theory that we had uncovered throughout the survey. I'm going to present some of those results, um, our key findings and conclusions, and any questions therein afterwards. So back to the beginning again. We're going to look at the importance of that client-consultant relationship. Uh, have no doubt about it, it is the most important relationship within that whole supply chain, within that whole project team. Our research has shown that the success of the project or the impact that the success of the client consultant relationship will have impacts on 98% of the whole life cost. What we're saying very clearly is that the advice given in inception right on through to construction will last, will have a legacy right on through the, the longevity and the lifespan of that project. Therefore, the better that advice, the more reliable that advice, the more likely that the project is to succeed. Now that relationship, that client consultant relationship exists out of need. Now that need is based on two key things. There's many, but two key things. The first one is expert knowledge. So it's not any knowledge, it's just I know a bit, but it has to be expert. It's very particular knowledge that they're looking for and qualifies as expert or professional knowledge. And secondly, it's to do with the delivery of that service. That delivery of service must be competent. So we're looking at a competent delivery of service that is based on expert or professional knowledge. Now, sometimes conflicts can arise. I know you probably don't believe me, but sometimes issues do arrive in that client-consultant relationship, and these need to be managed. Our research did look at that, and that helped to build a wee profile, a wee argument for us as to why trust is important. And we found that if there are issues in that client-consultant relationship, that they are best managed, they are best um, mitigated through acts of collaboration. This led us to explore, well, what really is collaboration and what home does it sit in and how is that important in the client-consultant relationship? And if you bear with me, hopefully I'll answer some of those questions. So we found that to be truly collaborative or to be effective in your collaboration, it requires trust. It requires this thing called trust to be at the heart of the process. I'm going to talk to you a wee bit more about trust, particularly trust in the client-consultant relationship. Trust is very, very difficult to define, exceptionally difficult to define. Trust um, is situational, it depends what situation it is, it is multifaceted. But whenever we try to narrow down that um, theory, that huge theory on trust, we find that within the client consultant relationship, that trust is an exchange mechanism. You trust me, I will do, etc. Um, in relation to both establishing that client consultant relationship. But it just can't be early on commitment. I trust you, let's get on, let's collaborate, and then that's it. I've won the contract, no need to collaborate any further. But it's very important that that, that that trust is maintained throughout the life of the project. Without trust, there is no commitment to the relationship. If there's no commitment to the relationship, you're not going to collaborate in that relationship. You're not going to commit to that relationship. It is going to have a detrimental effect on project success. Now, commitment itself isn't as it suggests here in the slide, OK, I'm going to commit, I believe you, we need trust, we need to collaborate. Commitment requires a positive attitude towards project objectives. Sometimes they might be your objectives, sometimes they're just quite simply the project objectives. So in order to commit, which is a prerequisite for collaboration, you truly want to commit. And therein, these acts will enhance trust in the client-consultant relationship. So therefore, if you do place these acts within the client-consultant relationship, you will have trust, and that trust will be established and should be maintained throughout that process. You also require trust to collaborate with the clients, and I've talked about collaboration, and what I really mean is to help the client develop project objectives. Sometimes that might mean changing project objectives, and to nurture the client in those project objectives in the pursuit of the project. And when I'm talking the project, I'm talking the entire life of the project, not just getting to the construction phase of it. So our research then uncovered and discovered lots of different theories based on trust. And then we were able to identify theories relating to client-consultant relationships or service theories. And one of the key bases, and that's the, the terminology I'm going to use, that's the terminology used within this theory of trust, 
one of the key bases of trust was confidence-based trust. Confidence-based trust is a key attribute of trust in the client-consultant relationship. It is based, um, or it is instilled through a consultant's ability to meet these predetermined commitments. Again, if I hark back to my earlier slides, these predetermined commitments are based on expert knowledge and competent service delivery. Predetermined commitments were further found, we had further identified 21 key attributes of um, client-based trust in the client-consultant relationship. Now, there's a full table. I didn't put it all there today because time doesn't permit and slide doesn't permit, but the table is there in the conference proceedings. So we identified these 21 attributes within our survey or within our research. Essentially, these attributes, what I mean by competence-based trust in the client-consultant relationship is competence, expertness, functional competence, specific competence, which could be in relation to BIM, interpersonal competence, how you communicate with others within the team, what you, um, how effective that communication is, your business sense, your acumen, and your professional judgment. These were some of the attributes. As I said, there's 21, and you can see those presented in the table in the conference proceedings. We further find that if you do have these attributes, within the client-consultant relationship, these very specific competence-based attributes in the client-consultant relationship, the project will succeed. And the project will succeed because you have the um, attributes that will improve problem solving, improve flexibility, increase cooperation, and that in itself also enhances your demonstration, your commitment to that relationship, and therein feeds that um, maintenance of this long-term relationship of trust between client and the consultant. We then decided to look at one of the key attributes of competence-based trust, which was collaboration. And we thought, gosh, that sounds familiar. That sounds a bit like BIM. And we've heard an awful lot of that today. So we wanted to see, was there enough in that attribute of collaboration? within building information modelling that could effectively enhance trust in the client-consultant relationship. So to do so required a review of the collaborative attributes of building information modelling. So again, we undertook a survey, and as I said, we've heard a lot about that this morning, so I'm hoping what I'm presenting here this afternoon is echoing and mirroring what we have heard from our key um, and guest lecturers or guest uh, presenters this afternoon and this morning. Successful BIM implementation requires users to focus on strategic people issues. I'm not quite sure that we've heard it put that way this morning, but we know that there is a willingness to commit, not just to use the tool, but to use it for the right purpose um, and to get the most out of it. Some of these pe people issues, are, or some of these strategic people issues, are focusing on the client. And when I mean focusing on the client, I mean focusing on the project and the project objectives and committing to that. We also find within our research that by focusing on the client, by using BIM for the best use towards client collaboration, it actually enhanced and acted as a catalyst for adopting building information modelling across the supply chain. So by using BIM, by focusing on the client, actually in itself enhanced the entire uptake of BIM within the supply chain. BIM itself, as we have heard, as I said, I'm going to hopefully mirror and echo quite a lot of what has been said here, it can improve relationships by enhancing collaboration. And it can do so by improving coordination across the supply chain, increasing communication effectively across the supply team, improving project understanding, which is most definitely essential, um, and promoting and producing coordination between the various different members of the supply team. So already we're starting to see how some of those attributes do lend itself to a competence-based attribute within the client-consultant relationship. But like competence-based trust, collaboration within BIM requires a willingness to commit. You can't just take the tools, take the technology, take the kit, do the course and present it. You actually are using it and up adopting it for the right reasons because you want to enhance project performance and you're not going to do that all by yourself and you're not going to do it because it doesn't say that on the box or on the tin or whatever analogy was used this afternoon I think was the box. So therefore to truly get the most out of BIM, to get the maximum benefit or the maximum collaboration out of BIM, you need to commit, you need to willingly commit to the adoption of BIM. We know that there is a demand, there always has been, we just cannot satisfy this demand for greater, for, for greater collaboration within our industry, within our built environment or our built heritage that we've heard so much about this morning. 
This research found that professional knowledge, collaborative skills, attitudes, motivation and BIM acceptance are the four key attributes of success in BIM collaboration. Out of those four key attributes, the most important or the most significant of um, those attributes is acceptance. Acceptance of BIM correlated with experience and knowledge. And again, I have heard that repeated a number of times this afternoon, but if I go back to some of my earlier slides, BIM correlated with experience and knowledge. This experience goes back to your um, expert knowledge, so your knowledge, your expert knowledge, so you need to have expert knowledge of BIM, and secondly, your experience. And to me, your experience is saying the same as your confidence service delivery. So I'm suggesting here already before we even get on to the survey that accepting BIM to get client leadership requires you to be competent and requires you to have that expert knowledge. We then took our information. We took our information on the importance of client consultant relationship, but more importantly, what was important, what's really going to make a difference in that relationship, and we found it to be trust. We looked at one aspect of that trust. There are many, but we looked at one, and we looked at competence-based trust, and we identified 21 key attributes of competence-based trust in a client consultant relationship. We conducted a survey, and that survey was conducted with the top 100 UK construction industry clients. Now, in total, 189 clients agreed to participate in the survey. Actually, only 53 agreed in the end, but we got 189 people saying, yes, Sharon, no problem, we'll fill in your survey. The response rate was 53%. For any researchers out there, I didn't do a bad job. 53 was all right. He said, no, he's agreeing with me. Thank you very much. 53 is not a bad job. But ignore the 53 and ignore the 189%. We went out to the top 100 clients in the UK construction industry. That represented somewhere between 60 and 70% of all construction spend that year. So we went to the major UK construction clients, um, the ones that you get every single year. So they're very influential. They know what they're talking about. They're our intelligent, our informed client. So it was really tough with the survey results that we had. We identified the 21 attributes. We sent the survey out to these very influential, informed, intelligent clients and asked them, do you consider them important? And if you do, how much do you consider them important? Again, time and space doesn't permit me, but I honestly could go on till way after dinner time talking about this, but I won't. So I'm going to present the key findings from our survey. And the key results show that they ranked they believed that all 21 attributes that we identified were either very important or important. So none were not important is what I'm saying. Yeah, Sharon, we agree with your findings. We do believe that competence-based trust is really important, very important within the client-consultant relationship. But specifically, if I just even give you the key line um, headline survey results today, they rank the following three in the highest position. Achieving results, quality of technical service and experience. They identified these three attributes as the three most important confidence-based trust attributes in the client-consultant relationship. To us, these results suggested that clients place greater emphasis on consultants who can produce tangible results that are more project-related than services-related. I'll explain that a wee bit more when I removed into the lower-ranking attributes. So the bottom three attributes out of this list of 21 were education, qualification, and ethical motivation. They did consider them important, but just they were the lowest ranking. This suggests to us that clients consider these, I have termed, softer attributes um, to be professional qualities. They're inherent in all consultants. So clients believe that, yes, they are important, but that's the baseline. That's the basis for establishing this relationship. I trust that you are professional. I trust that you have these qualifications. I trust that you are competent enough. But to truly trust, to get the enhancement within that client-consultant relationship meant that you actually are delivering on what you told me you were going to do. I am getting the results. You are doing what you're saying. You are doing, and you are giving me that competent technical service that I require. And all of that is based on your experience. So they did rank all 21, but they found that the actual project results were much more important than the softer professional side of these um, competence-based attributes. 
I have several slides. Um, they're called findings and conclusions. Um, to me, they're more of a discussion. Um, and I get, I suppose, to the conclusion in the last slide. So I have a few slides. And this is where I want to marry these two issues together, where we know now, hopefully my research here has proven today, that we do need a good, strong client-consultant relationship to get the best from the project. Secondly, that's going to depend on the levels of trust and that trust being maintained. And I'm arguing today that BIM can help enhance that trust within that client-consultant relationship. So essentially, our findings from this survey and this research that was conducted show that project success is dependent on many factors, ranging from financial to technical to interpersonal. This research obviously focused on the interpersonal successes, and it found that the most significant, uh, the most significant uh, relationship was the client and consultant uh, relationship, and it had a long-term impact on the entire lifespan of the project. To ensure that you get the most from this relationship and therefore maximise the opportunity to enhance project performance, a successful client-consultant relationship requires trust. This re trust is required both in establishing through your professional attributes, those softer ones that we identified, but also through the more harder, tangible results such as achieving results in your competent quality of service. Yet despite this fundamental necessity for competence-based serv uh, service or trust to be at the heart of this process, trust has to be earned through the consultant's ability to deliver this service, and this service must be delivered competently. And this is where I can now marry in the, the trust, the levels of trust in the relationship with BIM. I believe that BIM, Building Information Modelling, can actually enhance that relationship and therefore improve project success. BIM is a project tool that can enhance the consultant's ability to provide a competent service. I've talked about that because of the communication, the efficiencies, the effectiveness, the coordination of the team. All of those can help enhance the project, help enhance collaboration, and therein help enhance trust within the client, help maintain, I suppose, uh, trust in the client consultant relationship. As a technological product, BIM can provide an effective and efficient service, there's no doubt about it, because it can start to mitigate some of those risks through some of the processes that I've identified. However, BIM's greatest asset is the process itself, and I want to get back to something that I hopefully hasn't slipped your mind and I didn't go over too quickly, was that willingness, that mindset, that buy-in to the process and not just the product. It requires commitment to the project relationship, and that requires to be maintained. That is a long-term commitment. Commitment to the client-consultant relationship requires this to be demonstrated through a competent service delivery, not just at the start of the project, but throughout the project. This is best supported through project collaboration, effective communication, coordination, all of which can successfully deliver project performance and success. This research too, um, I'm hoping, I'm not quite sure, but maybe from some of your questions, um, has attempted to close the divide between those harder technical side or aspects of building information modelling and that mindset, that willingness to actually use and adopt it as a process, those relational ship aspects, if you like, by exploring the concept that BIM can enhance trust in the client-consultant relationship. Trust is pivotal in project success, have no doubt about that. If there's no trust, the project will not go right. And it's not just at the beginning. It is therefore of increased importance that BIM is used as a tool to enhance project delivery, but not just because it is um, a more sophisticated way of improving data or transferring data, because it is a commitment to the process of collaboration. It is hoped that this paper will stimulate a debate I'm not sure, maybe even the odd question or two, around the industry adoption of BIM and the wider consideration of building information modelling and building trust in collaborative relationships, not just in client-consultant, but client-consultant, contractor, subcontractor, right throughout the supply chain. Thank you very much for listening. Um, questions from the floor? Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, of the clients that responded to the yeah. survey, um, how many were engaging in terms of that? Could attribute significant improvement in the relationship it, to 
we, we didn't ask that. That would be wonderful. I mean, that's definitely where the next... It was even a slide I had, and I thought it was two slides over. Where's this taking us to next? I am so dying to get out there and say, you have told us now this is necessary. You have right this is necessary. We have shown that this is that uh, BIM can enhance that collaboration. What more do we need to prove to you that you are adopting this? Um, I am aware that they are inte intelligent, informed clients. They mostly were public sector. So they will be, as you know, in the UK mandated, so they will be using BIM to some degree. But that shouldn't just be enough. I want to see true client leadership and not just because they have this piece of white paper, I suppose, telling them that. But definitely this is where this research is going. Um, and I suppose even the consultants as well. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoyed your presentation. And uh, I know that it was about trust between the consultant and the client. But one of the issues that causes a problem with trust um, in construction generally is the contract between the client and the contractor. Yeah. And I was just wondering, was there any comment in your research from the consultants about any effect that might have on trust in the industry generally? Um, th there's, there's no doubt about it. There is a dire need to look at levels of trust in um, the supply chain. Um, certainly between the consultant and the contractor, which is often overlooked in favour of the client and the contractor. Um, there is a need to examine that. I didn't. I was very focused um, on my review looking at the client and the consultant for one of the reasons I put up in the first slide. You get that right, hopefully you get everything else right. Your consultant's going to be part of that process. You're tendering your procurement process, even selecting your contract that's going to bring the contractor in. If that advice is good, robust and is based on trust, then that's the best that we have so far for selecting the right contractor. But I'd love that next phase of the research to look at the relationship between not the client and the contractor, but the consultant and the contractor and the levels of trust between the design team, I suppose, and the contractor. It was outside of my sphere, but um, it is a huge issue in the industry. And it just hasn't gone away, despite um, BIM and partnering and all the wonderful things that we've done. It still needs to be at the heart of the process, and we still haven't fixed it. And all these things are wonderful, including BIM, for enhancing that and mitigating that um, and improving, I suppose, trust across the supply chain. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, our public works contracts don't exactly uh, lend <laughs> themselves to that. <laughs> Which obviously is a problem, but it doesn't look like they're going to change anytime too soon. You know, um, JCT is exactly the same up north. Um, it's JCT and NEC. Um, NEC, you know, this wonderful trusting contract, and then it gives you 700 different clauses you have to abide by. Um, JCT made a failed attempt at introducing a partnering contract. I'm going to say failed. I don't know anybody that's using it, and I do follow that. Um, there's just too much money in it, I believe, for people to really, truly um, change from those types of contracts, and they're all going to change again. Um, I, I when you say there's too much money in it? There's too much money in it for um, the legal side. I don't mean the consultant side, but for the legal side. Um, oh. They enjoy that process. <laughs> uh, there's, no, there's no doubt about it, and they'll openly tell you they, they thoroughly enjoy it. That four out of every five pounds paid out by insurers goes to the legal team. Yeah, and they thoroughly Staggering. enjoy it. So. Um, I, I can remember bringing in a, a construction lawyer into one of my multi discipline collaborative class yeah. to talk about collaboration. He says, Oh, that's a novel idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah that, that's yeah. been some of my um, discussions. Now, too. Time wise, this is, this is great. I think we can have one more. Okay. And then, and then can I suggest everybody just goes and. Leave okay. me alone. <laughs> this, this is just a comment rather than a question. The, the new okay. PPC contracts, yes. uh, the 2015 contracts, which are yeah. currently in the draft stage, mm -hmm. are actually written. One of the aims in this is that they will support the collaboration which takes place in a BIM environment. So it will be very interesting to see how that develops. It would, uh, hi is the next question. Yeah, hi. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much you indeed. Yourself.